Mike, go ahead. Jim, thank you very much. We are walking into the scene right now. You're looking at live pictures, and I got to tell you, Jim, I just shake my head. There's the elementary school right there. It has taken a direct hit, and it just takes your breath away. Uh, I have, I, I truly, I don't have a lot of information I can give because I don't know it. I'm just walking up onto the scene right now. There's fire trucks behind us. There are, I count, one, two, three ladders. I see ambulances. Watch your step here. We're going to take you right over here. Towards I believe this is Briarwood Elementary School, and this is a very sturdy brick structure. My goodness, look at this. Oh. You look over here to the east, it is every single home is flattened. It is very, very, very reminiscent of what happened in Joppa, Missouri. You know, we have ambulances on the scene right here, firefighters over here. You see heavy trucks over here, firefighters will be doing, I imagine if they haven't already done search and rescue. Let's, uh, let's turn and go this way. Uh, the, uh, you see the cars that were in parking lot, you know, are all, are all mangled. This is what, a, if you, um, were with us two years ago when we were in Joppa, Missouri, and we had all these vehicles in the parking lot of St. Saint, uh, Saint Joseph uh, Hospital. They were all mangled and on top of each other. This is exactly what it looks like. We're going to come over here into the scene and see what we can ascertain for you folks now. Just, I think, uh, realizing what's happened to their homes. This is uh, obviously a very densely uh, populated neighborhood here, and uh, the scene is, is just horrific. Uh, we know now at least an EF4 tornado, um, maybe, possibly stronger. Ma'am, can you tell us what the name of the school is? This was, uh, is this Briarwood? Is this Briarwood? Uh, where there, uh, obviously it's, uh, it's uh, Briar, Briarwood. This is Briarwood Elementary School, as, as we've been hearing, we've been told. And uh, that is just uh, is a tough spot. Briarwood Elementary. Just a tough pill to swallow right there when you see what has happened to, to that elementary school. Look at this neighborhood. Oh, this is, a, this is a brick home. And it does not even exist anymore. It takes a very, very powerful tornado to take a brick home right down to the cement slab. Uh, this, is, this is exactly what we saw in 1999 in Moore. It is absolutely stunning. I have... Only one time in my life seen anything that looked like this, and that was in Joplin, Missouri. And this is, uh, ooh, this is tough to look at. See over here, we have uh, search and rescue teams over here at the school. Looks like they're coming out right now. They have, they have uh, search dogs with them. Um, that's, uh, that's what you like to see is uh, hopefully them coming out Without any, without anything, that's usually a good sign that uh, you know they basically, hopefully. But look at the scene. Everywhere you look, it is destroyed. I mean, destroyed. We're looking off to the north here. Uh, folks, just kind of walking back through their neighborhood, trying to figure out, you know, what what exactly has happened. People going through uh, their homes. Obviously, a w woman here. And it is, you know, you, you, you try to salvage anything you can from your home. Uh, it's a very, very difficult task. You, you look up here, people are literally walking on top of their homes. Literally walking on top of their homes. Trying to pick out maybe things that are important to them, things that they may want to uh, salvage. Ooh. The uh, police officers up there, uh, we see ambulance up there, search and rescue on the other side of the road there. Again, this tornado happening roughly three and a half hours or so ago. Uh, and so a tornado that's this big, a tornado that's this strong, it takes a long time to sift through all of the debris, to sift through the damage. We just hope that a lot of people that were here heeded the warning. They went to their basement. They went to a storm shelter that they may have. I gotta tell you, you know, when I look at a home that looks like this, even if you were in a bathroom, you may not have had any chance. Uh, it, it, I mean, there's nothing left of a huge risk of just being. Uh, this is truly remarkable. I'm just stunned by what I'm seeing. I'm not sure what that may be over there. I, there's a large tank over there. It may have been a, you know, an apartment complex or something like that. That could be 
of some sort or uh, maybe an oil tank, something like that. But uh, this is unlike uh, anything you'll ever see. Uh, first pictures again, this tornado happening, you know, roughly three and a half hours or so ago, maybe, maybe almost uh, four hours ago. There are hardly any trees to remain. What you're looking at on the right side of your screen here would be the south edge of the tornado. And then it went on to the north there. I would, you know, at this point, I'd estimate the brunt of the damage is roughly about a quarter of a mile wide uh, or so. I'm just eyeballing that at this point. Um, but this is, the, again, fresh images for you uh, this evening, folks. And this is, is something that you may never see again in your lifetime. Uh, homes like this, you know, you look, look at this damage. It just takes your breath away. When, when, you, see, when you see what's going on here, um, it is just a, a devastating scene. Kim and Kelly, I know you've seen this before. We, we, went through this, we went through this two years ago in Joplin, Missouri. This is the tough side of our job is reporting on stuff like this, and uh, I'm stunned again. I just never thought that I would First responders do what they do. I mean, uh, th those guys are going to work long, tireless, sleepless hours tonight to try to, you know, bring people out of rubble, bring people out of their homes, schools, uh, just door to door, trying to figure out, you know, what exactly they for folks, uh, we have a ma'am. How are you? Uh, you okay. Right Tell me your name. Sheree Lowen. Oh, were you were you home at the time? No, I put my car in the garage and went. Sick. It didn't get there. Tell me about this. What? Tell me about the homes. Tell me about your neighbors. What is this community like? Um, well, normal, normal, everyday community. The school was here, and uh, you know it's. For me, I work at home, so I couldn't get out at 8.30, and I couldn't get home at 3.30 because the school's people were here, and, you know, that was kind of a hassle. But uh, but it was just, you know, say hi. I, I don't know that people were really close. Uh, next door neighbor, I found him. My cross-the-street neighbor, I found him. I was real worried about him for a long time. Um, do you know the status of your neighbor when you We're good. They're good. They left before the storm, but I haven't seen them, and Glenn was at work. It looks like well, a lot of brick homes here. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah. Yeah. No. Lived here about five. Um, you know, it was a nice neighborhood. Very nice neighborhood. When when you look, can you do you have any? Can you ascertain for us at all? You know how far this goes, or, or how far off to the north this goes? No. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law came by. He's an Oklahoma City fireman, and he said it was clear all the way across 35. Do, do you know if there are certain areas where, I mean, if you have any idea at all, where, where fire and rescue may be um, no. located? No, I, I don't know. I had to walk. They were getting the kids out of the school, and my son-in-law brought me there, and then I walked in, and I haven't been anyplace else. Well, we appreciate your time Thank this you. evening. Good luck to you. We, you. We, we're sorry it's under such poor circumstances, yeah. but uh, God bless you. Um, you know, you, you take a look at, at, at her home. And uh, you, you just got a feel for the folks um, that, that go through this. But you know, look at there. She found some pictures. <laughs> you know, a, a little smile on the face. When you find something as valuable to you as pictures, you know, that's what it, uh, that's good stuff. That is good stuff there. But it is uh, Kelly and Kim. We've been through this before, haven't we? It just seems like this is becoming all too frequent an occurrence. And when you have a town like Moore, that's hit now for the second time in 14 years. It is. Uh, it, it really makes you question. It really makes you uh, makes you question what's going on in the world these days. It makes you really um, take your own mortality into account. And uh, you know, one of those times where you kind of get a little philosophical and you think about you know the things that are important in your life when you see scenes like this. That's for sure. And Mike, Chris Warren here. Uh, absolutely, you're showing us there those pictures. Ask that rest give us an idea of how far the destruction went. And I think that speaks volumes to just how big this is. Can you even get an idea of how far this goes? I and mean, you come into this? And it's just, it's as, is it, it looks like it's as far as the eye can see. And is that what it is? This, uh, yeah, it is. Um, it, it, scan over here to the south. 
and this is the direction we came in. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a street over there, and you can see some homes are still standing, okay? That, we believe, is kind of the fringe of the damage. There are some homes over there that have damage. Parts of their roofs are ripped off, or they have collapsed walls, but most of the structure is still standing. And then you come this way to the north. Okay, and you and you scan over to the east, and this is the direction of the tornado. Okay, so imagine at this point you've got maybe a quarter mile wide tornado or larger, just tearing through this neighborhood and going eastbound over toward I-35, and truly just um, growing up everything in its path. I've I've I said Chris one time in my life, and and uh, and my jaw just dropped. You know, when, when we were in Joppa, Missouri, and, and we saw this. But if you go off to the north there, you can also see off in the distance there, there are still some more homes over there that are standing. So you, you kind of ascertain that that might be the north. Estimate roughly, maybe a little bit more than a quarter, maybe, maybe as much as a half a mile wide at this particular the, uh, the ground is just full of debris and it, it's just a mess. But that over there, you know, is. is uh, Oklahoma City Fire and Rescue on hand right now at heavy equipment. We believe, because there's not a lot of action at the elementary school, at Briarwood Elementary School right now, that they may potentially have pulled everyone out. But uh, I think it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a chaotic scene. You know, the folks here, they're, they're literally just sitting in their, sitting in their driveways and have nowhere to go, Chris. You know, you kind of you kind of put yourself in there, choose. What would you do if that was your house? You have nowhere to go. You just sit there in your driveway and you just kind of wonder what just happened. M Mike, you have the unique history here of seeing this before. A lot of people will never go through their life and see anything like that. But you've seen this. You mentioned being at, uh, at Joplin moments after that destructive tornado went through. So you've seen this before. What did these residents have in front of them over the next few hours what's going to happen well i mean you know there's it's a painful process now that they go through uh because you now build an entire community it's not Story, visit lyrica.com. When the spark ignites, go ahead, be spontaneous. Can they go to a friend? Can they go to a shelter? Can they go to a hotel? Something like that. What are they going to do tomorrow? Back into the neighborhood and collect any of their belongings. Will they be able to get with their insurance agent? Will they be able to get with their employer? Uh, has their employer been hit? Uh, there are so many things that happen when a tornado this large hits, Chris. It's almost more than the mind can take. And so I think, you know, at this point, you take one little baby step at a time to get your life back in order. But in the immediate aftermath of something like this, um, it, you just, you, you certainly, everyone will hear why this happened to me, why this happened to my town. All right, Mike. And so what, uh, I mean, you just said you, you've, you've only been there for a few minutes and you have not had a chance to speak with anybody, but you've seen people. Can you give us kind of an idea of what's going on uh, with the people that are around you? Uh, yeah, yeah, as best we can. Hello, sir, how are you? How are you doing? Please tell us your name. Mike Murphy. Uh, Mike, you're a teacher at this school, yes. is what we understand. Were you inside when the yes. tornado struck? Can you tell us what happened? We were uh, just ducked down in the way, and all of a sudden the ceiling panel started flying up. You could hear it sound like a train. And then the wall, the teacher's lounge came up above us, and then the other wall caught it, so we were trapped under there. But Where do you take the kids when the tornado sirens alert you? The very center of each building. We have three buildings, one with the office and uh, the lower grades, and then the upper grade, another building with the library and the upper grades, and go to the center of those buildings, or, and then our bathrooms. This is a difficult question to ask. Can you tell us about the status of any of the faculty or any of the children? As far as I know, everybody's okay. That is, uh, that is great news. That is yes. great news. What, how many days left in school? It's Monday. We had Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we were done. Four more days, yeah. and school would have yeah. been out, and mm -hmm. nobody would have been in there. Have you ever, how long have you lived in Moore? Uh, Ten years. You weren't here when the tornado came through in 1999, but I'm sure you've heard yeah. plenty of stories. You may have one of your own. We really appreciate you Thank talking you. to us. Thank, Thank you so you. much for stopping by. We're very, we're very happy everyone made it out okay. And very nice job.
spot. You know, I think a lot of probably very, very happy and relieved parents uh, to know. And whew, I got to tell you, you know, I was very, very worried there about what's happened. I, you know, just to show you, I mean, we'll turn around. That's the school where he teaches. It's, it's right there. And boy, that is a that is a that's a that's tough to look at when you see a, a home like that or a building like that, a school like that. You know that kids are in there. Uh, maybe they're at their desk, maybe they're in the cafeteria, maybe they're gym class, and next thing you know, their building is coming apart around them. Uh, Chris, again, it's it's just um, it's a miracle, you know, that you hear stories like that. The teachers get all their students to the center of the building. We tell you that's one of the safest places you can go, and it certainly is when you get got a big institutional building like that. But what a relief to know that all the kids, all the faculty, everyone inside that building is okay. And, Mike, uh, you spoke with a, a little bit earlier. We saw it looked like some firefighters going by. Can you tell what other activity is going on around you? It sounds like we are helicopters as well. But are there still, does it look like rescue efforts of any kind right now, or is it really just people kind of sifting through their belongings? Well, I, I think a little of both. Um, you know, we have seen um, search and rescue off in some of the homes down here. I think it, ta it may take a while for, for it to, to continue. You know, a lot of times what you'll end up getting is just public reports or, or neighbors saying, I can't find my neighbor or I can't find my dog. I can't find, you know, some of my family members. And so it's basically word of mouth at this point. And then uh, firefighters search and rescue will then radio in for help and they'll just go from one spot to another to another. And, you know, the, these gentlemen will be on, on duty for hours. This evening, just going house to house to house, trying to figure out, you know, who, who's where and when. A lot of times, you know, if people are trapped, what, what fire and rescue can't do is get to them. They may be unconscious. They may not be able to talk. They may be under debris, and you can't hear them. A lot of times what they'll do is see them as quickly as they can because they have an acute sense of hearing, and they're specifically trained to, to smell, and they literally can smell live bodies and so what they're trained to do is when they find or they smell a live body they immediately bark and that tells the rescuers there's a live body right here and you have to dig at this particular location these, tr these dogs are also in and in as as morbid as this sounds this is what they are trained to do if a dog can smell a dead body they sit and their trainer then that is acknowledging that the dog has now sensed a dead body. And so they know that they can dig at that particular location. They may not find anybody alive because the dog's senses are that acute. They can tell the difference between alive and a dead body. But this is, I mean, I even oh, look off in the distance there, Chris. Uh, you know, there's, there's smoke in the distance. Uh, we're going to try to get you as much information as we can. But, you know, when, when the... the the scene and the scope is this big. It's sometimes hard to get your hands around it. We'll do our best we can for you this evening, Chris. Yeah, I know, Mike, you've been, uh, you, you just got there. You haven't really had a chance to talk to too many people, but there may be some uh, viewers that are just now joining us. Can you kind of give us an idea of where you are again for the people that are just joining us and what you're seeing and maybe put this into perspective of just the size of this tornado and the destruction that went along with the size of that tornado? Well, Chris, it was about um, roughly four hours or so, or so ago um, that we had a very violent, large tornado developed near Newcastle, Oklahoma. This is on the southwest side of Oklahoma City, okay? And it intensified as it moved toward this town of Moore, which is a densely populated town. It's a large suburb on the south side of Oklahoma City that has a very, very um, storied history with tornadoes. And this tornado, at this particular point, it looks like it could have been as much as a half a mile wide. And it just mowed through town west to east and took down just about everything in its path. It hit an elementary school, Briarwood Elementary School, behind us. Everyone there is accounted for and okay, faculty and students. This neighborhood is well built of brick buildings. You can see that most of them are all the way down and just piles of rubble right now. To me, from what I see here, this looks exactly like it did in Joplin, Missouri two years ago. If I was a National Weather Service surveyor, I would look at these homes, I would look at this institution back here, and I would probably say this is an EF5 tornado. I haven't seen all the damage, but from where I stand right now, this is an EF5 tornado at this point, roughly half a mile wide. 
Um, they're just at this point staging in a lot of locations. This may be one of the most devastating tornadoes we've seen in recent times. We have ambulances on scene. They're getting ready to set up lights because night is going to fall here soon. The search and rescue will continue through the night. They need to have lights to see. They're going to go house to house. They're going to try to figure out if everyone's accounted for in every single home in here, and they won't stop until they know that every single person in every single home is accounted for. Some people, they won't find anything because the people weren't home at the time, but they need to still know that they're accounted for. We talked to a woman that lives in this home uh, right here, and again, the, the thing is, all she's doing now is trying to figure out what she can collect. She wasn't home at the time, thank goodness, because heaven knows what would have happened if she was. But now away. the process is through the night, and this will probably continue for the next couple of days, Chris, uh, is search and rescue and getting people uh, the, the necessities that they need, getting them any types of toiletries, prescriptions, clothing, transportation, money, uh, any of those kinds of items, and try to help them slowly get back on their feet because when you look at the damage like this, it doesn't happen quickly, uh, that's for sure. Um, we can tell you this, um, this just in now, the Oklahoma City Chief Office is telling us now at least 10 fatalities from today's tornado and uh, we, um, we saw a number like this a couple of years ago in Joplin, and next morning that number jumped significantly. Um, we, we don't want to jump to conclusions, uh, but when I look at damage like this, and I don't know how far it goes, I know it goes to at least I-35, which is probably maybe a mile in that direction, and so this will go on for at least a mile and then continue beyond I-35. Uh, so, Chris, uh, we're just learning that right now. Chief Medical Examiner from Oklahoma City is now fatalities um, that's 10 too many you know, in our opinion in the, in the business that we're in um, you know but you look at homes you look at cars they, they're mangled it's just a it's a it's a scene that um, I, I truly am at a loss of words for all right Mike thank you for that and again as Mike just mentioned we're now learning that uh, 10 people have been killed because of this uh, dangerous storm this deadly storm that tore through more Oklahoma and Mike also alluded to the fact that this potentially could just be the beginning of that and we are still looking at new pictures live pictures coming into the weather channel uh, still seeing uh, the rescue efforts going on you can see all of the yellow there all of the firefighters the rescue crews that are sifting they're digging through the rubble after this uh, massive tornado tore through the town and it is going to be hours if not days before the full scope of this is realized. We know that because of storms in the past that have gone through areas. Mike also mentioned that, you know, it wasn't just a couple of, of homes or businesses. This is entire neighborhoods and where Mike was, he said he couldn't, you know, tell how far the damage went. So the scope of this is absolutely enormous. Again, we just now getting word that 10 people at this point have been killed because of this strong tornado that moved through and uh, we're still seeing those rescue efforts going on. And uh, Mike Bettis, is still out there again. He just arrived on the scene a little bit ago, uh, has not really had a, a whole lot of time to look around. But again, Mike, we have to go back to to Joplin again and being on the scene uh, right after in a, a very eerily similar situation here. What's that? What's going on in your mind right now? Uh, it, what goes through my mind is the people that live here. Uh, you know, they, this is a moment that they're that is maybe the worst day of their lives, truly, when their town has just been mowed down by a giant tornado. They've lost everything, in essence. They've lost their school. This is Briarwood Elementary. It is going to have to be uh, torn down and rebuilt. Look at the cars in the parking lot. Uh, your vehicle has to be replaced. They've got heavy machinery in here. They're trying to clear the roads. Uh, people are trying to make phone calls. The cell phone lines are either down or jammed. You can't get in touch with anybody, and so you panic. Or your relatives that are you know, from out of town, maybe they're trying to reach you. They can't get a hold of you. Your relatives panic. It's just one of those situations that happens. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, everything okay? How, how did things go today? Uh, we're still in the process, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, you'll be here through the evening? Yes, sir. Okay. All night. Good job. Thank you very much, sir. Um, they're they're going to be here through the night. Um, the teacher that we just talked to said, as far as he knows, everyone is accounted for. What they'll do is make sure they'll go these guys that are specifically trained will go through that building room by room by room 
just to make sure. They want to make sure nobody is left inside and every single student and every single adult that was in that school is accounted for. Up, up the distance here, um, you know, I see uh, what's usually a pretty troubling sight. Uh, you see fire engines up there, I see ambulance up there, so they're likely fire and rescue responding to uh, a specific scene uh, that needs their attention. Uh, often that's going to mean that somebody inside is trapped or someone needs medical attention. And so they'll, they'll be up there intending that. I'll look at these cars. You know, look at these cars that are just smashed. Uh, this is, this is, um, this takes a violent tornado to pick up cars, and, uh, smash cars, with our affiliate K4 in Oklahoma and, City, out of uh, Oklahoma.